Right, the wing panel has been left overnight. The uh, front um, leading edge is now cured uh, and everything else is nice and dried. We now need to, as per the instructions, fit our W3 riblets here into position between the main spars and our leading edge. So what I'll do is I'll put some glue on these and start locating into position. Okay, just gently tuck them in. Make sure I need to make sure they're nice and square as well. And to do this again. A little bit of a fiddling, but we'll get there in the end. Okay, make sure they're nice and square. It's, it's important that we do actually spend a bit of time trying to do this because this is going to butt up to the centre section of the wing. I'm just going to put a little pin in here just to ensure. Doesn't move. Once I'm happy with that, and it's square, I can move on to the next one. That's nice and square now. And I've got my other W3 rib here. I don't know if I mentioned before that the rest of the um, false ribs they are quite a considerable bit um, larger, so don't get the two mixed up when you're actually trying to put this together. I'll just put the other one in and square that up and then it's just a case of going through the rest of the um, leading edge and main spars putting in the actual false ribs. As you can see this is quite a tight fit, but this is good, this is what we want to see. It means everything's going to marry together nicely. Okay, we'll just square this one up here. And there you go. Right. Now they're all in that's it, they're in position. What I'll do is I'll carry on through and um, put these false ribs in. All the way through so next time you see this you should see the false ribs running all the way along the, the wing right all our uh, false ribs are up in place and our w3 riblets um, just noticed on here we've got a little lodge of glue leaking down that needs to be tidied up so i'll just do that uh, next on the list is we need to put our top sheeting in um, on top of the F3 ribs running right the way through. Um, I've already pre-cut these uh, strips to size, they're 332 and um, what we'll do now is we'll just glue them into place. Do the ends of each sheet where this one's going to attach the trailing edge and the rear spar and then carefully push that into position wipe off any excess glue making sure it's all nice and square okay. that's one So let's line this one up. Pop him into position. And pop the excess glue again. Okay. 
and then there's just the one little bit left that goes to our small rivets at the front. Let's push that into position. Quite a snug fit. is squared up. Okay, then all I will do now is I'll go down and I'll pin this into place just to hold it in position while it's curing. Right, um, now we need to put in our forward wing uh, tip. That's this piece here. Um, it's cut from a um, balsa sheet, die cut sheet. Um, in the instructions it says it's cut over length, which it was, and we just needed to trim it down to fit between the um, leading edge and the actual aileron uh, leading edge as well. So that actually slides in there quite nicely now into position, and that sits on a 3 8 um, packing piece and a 3 16 packing piece to the rear which gives it a slight angle so what I'll do now is I will actually glue that into the position I'm just going to run a bead of glue along the front edge the rear edge and along the section that's going to attach to the rib Okay, and then what I will gently do is get that to locate in its final resting position. Just push down to make sure that it's fully located in the right position. And then to hold that in place, what I will do, I will just pop a pin in the front just to hold it onto the packing piece and likewise at the back we'll do the same okay notice this ribs just a little bit that just needs to be pushed up against the ribs so I should just um, put a pin in there to hold that in place there Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the next bit. Right, now we need to put the aft end of the wing tap, uh, section in. That's this small piece here. And again, it's just basically um, being shimmed up to one eighth, um, just at the leading edge of the uh, aileron. And then that just runs down to meet with the trailing edge of the back of the wing. So I'm just going to glue this into position and slide that in like so. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little pin in just in there to ensure it doesn't lift. And likewise, just one at the back just to ensure that that's all nice and steady and just leave that to cure now. Right the next job now is to fit the wingtip braces. Um, there's three of these as you can see two three to various lengths and they actually sit in predetermined locations as directed on the plans and Essentially, they will fit like how I'm laying them out now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue them into position. Um, I won't bother videoing that bit, but you'll see them all glued in position um, after I've done the job. Okay. Right, my last job today, which I've already started, is to insert the shear webs. These come pre-cut in a packet, although I have had to trim some of them down to get them to, to fit. Um, they're just basically 16th uh, balsa strip 
um, and we use the cross grain and place them in like so. As you can see, I've done two already. They're clamped and pinned in position. I'll just show you how I'm doing that. Basically, I'm just running a small piece of glue onto our uh, false riblets and then on here, on the sheet, I'm just putting some glue top and bottom, pretty much the same way as we did with our dihedral braces, although this time we're using our aliphatic glue instead of our epoxy. I'm just putting them into position and they're just sitting just below the spar, so when we come to cover the plane we do not have the shear webs slightly protruding and causing problems with the covering. If we do them just below and it works out the same gaps on the bottom spar as well. Just wipe off any excess glue and then put just a couple of pins in the bottom to hold the webs in place and generate a tight bond to the bottom spar. Okay, again as you can see got a small one here that we've had to pre-cut. Um, same thing applies, a little bit of glue on the bottom, a little bit of glue on the top and then just place it in to position. As it's quite tight here what I'll do is I'll put the clamp down the bottom and the clamp at the top. Okay. And the last one is this one here. And we'll do that. Again, a bit of glue in the top, a bit of glue at the bottom. And then just slide it into place. And get a clamp at the bottom. clamp in the top to hold it all in place. Okay, so that's it for the end of today. I'm just going to do the same thing for the rear spar shear webs and that'll be it. Now this all needs to cure off and practically ready to remove from the board. There is some sanding to do, but as with the stabilizer and the rudder, I like to do all the sanding in one go. Um, this will come off the board now and we need to turn it over because there's a little bit of work that we need to do on the underside which um, I'll explain and show you when we come back later.